Welcome to Jordan's Journal. I'm Representative Joe Jordan, and today I have a special guest, Representative Marcus Oshiro. And good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Joe. Good to be here on your, your show again. It's great to always sit here and talk a story with you. Yes, thank you for joining me again. My Different topic. Pleasure. My pleasure. Yes, yes. Um, we want to talk about CSG and CSG West. I hear you're the president. I'm the current chair of uh, Conference of State Government, CSG mm. West. Uh, we're comprised of 13 western states. Um, I don't know if you have a graphic that's going to show us oh, yeah, we do. a little we bit do. about it. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm the current chair. And I was the proud uh, host uh, this year of the 64th annual meeting in Honolulu at oh. the Sheraton Waikiki from the 29th of July. Wow. to uh, August 2nd. Yeah, yeah. So the 13 states? Um, okay, the, yeah, there's 13 states uh, that comprise uh, CSG West, uh, Alaska, Hawaii, um, and then on the U.S. mainland states, Washington, Oregon, California, uh, Montana, Idaho, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming. How long has CSG been around? Uh, this is the 64th annual meeting, so wow. it's been around for a while. Um, the last time we had the annual meeting here in Honolulu was back in 2003, and then the uh, host uh, was Senator Brian Taniguchi, oh. who brought the uh, entire um, CSG West organization uh, to, I think, the Hilton at that time, back in 2003. Oh. So, so we're blessed to get it back again. We're very blessed because normally the cycle takes us uh, to the 13 western states, so mm -hmm. every, every 13 years you have a chance to uh, be the host state and you know host a meeting here so we're very lucky to do it this year especially given the situation we're in right now to uh, recover um, from the recent recession and yes. the effects of the uh, Sendai tsunami and earthquake so we're very pleased to host this meeting here in Waikiki and of course um, Kyoya and the Royal Hawaiian Hotel were um, exceptional partners oh yes they were yeah they were great uh, and all the staff and crew and the service people uh, did an excellent job being gracious hosts to our oh, guests. Yes. And so not only did they enjoy themselves here, but we know they're going to be coming back uh, yeah. to visit us that's again. That's the key, right? Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. Yeah. Show them a good time and they'll sure. come back with their family mm -hmm. and friends. Mm -hmm. um, what does the CSG do? I mean, Well, CSG West, uh, CSG uh, is, is, is a national organization. Um, you have basically four regions. Mm -hmm. You have the uh, Southern, Le Southern Le 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 Legislative Conference, the, the Southern States, you have the Eastern States, you have the Midwest, Midwest States, and then you have the uh, uh, Western States. So there's four regions. Uh, it's a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization. Um, we have representatives and uh, offices in Washington, D.C. Mm. Uh, the principal office is in Kentucky, Kentucky Lex Lexington, Kentucky. Um, but we do uh, act as a um, a convener of best and brightest ideas of the s several states, oh. uh, both mm -hmm. on the regional level mm -hmm. as well on the national level. And so we can get the best ideas from people in Alaska, or in Nevada, in Colorado, or Wyoming, or Idaho, and Hawaii, and come together uh, on an annual basis mm -hmm. and share these best practices, best ideas, and then return home to our respective states with these new ideas, uh, new contacts, mm -hmm. and then. Uh, uh, new ideas to better serve our constituents. Yeah. So is it just like legislators or is it also government officials? It's also government officials. We also bring in folks from the executive branch uh, and also from the judicial branch. So mm. we bring in both legislative um, leaders, uh, executive branch, uh, governor uh, level leaders, department level le leaders, and also judicial, judicial participants too. Oh, I mean, it's an opportunity for other legislators and other government leaders to get together and it, it, it see what is. other states are doing. It, it certainly is. And we also go outside the U.S. borders. Uh, CSG West in particular uh, has relationships with uh, most of those nearby southern state um, assemblies and uh, government organizations uh, below the border mm -hmm. uh, in Mexico along the, the Arizona, Nevada, Texas, California border with about a dozen of the Mexican states um, through the um, Border Legislative Conference that uh, we have this interchange of ideas oh. and about solutions. So we actually act as a uh, emissary for U.S. federal uh, policy through the Border Legislative Conference through CSG West. So we're a very active, dynamic region and uh, it's been very exciting being the, oh. being the current chair. Yeah. So how long is your chairmanship? 
Uh, it's, it's one year, and I'll be uh, uh, turning it over to my good uh, um, uh, vice chair, uh, Rosie Berger from Wyoming. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been uh, just exceptional in, in, in supporting and being, being part of my team for mm -hmm. this past year, along with uh, Rich Wills from Idaho, and the incoming uh, chair, uh, Kelvin Atkinson from Nevada. But the four of us have been uh, leading the organization for the past year. Oh. So in Washington, uh, in October, I'll be turning over the gavel to uh, Rosie Berger oh. from Wyoming, uh, who is going to be uh, leading us uh, moving forward. The next, next year, huh? Next year. Oh. Yeah. So when CSG came here, um, what kind of preparation was that? And well, it was over a year, a uh, year and a half, almost two years in, in the planning process. Uh, really stepped up the, a, lot, a lot of the... Um, the fundraising activities and the solicitation of the panels and the pre presenters and the keynote speakers over the mm -hmm. past year. So a lot of work, um, you know, and I, I need to uh, give a shout out uh, to the, uh, my staff, uh, yeah. principally uh, Tracy, Tracy Kubota, mm -hmm. my office manager who took, uh, took the lead in coordinating a lot of the functions, as well as Pat uh, Maoshimizu, the house clerk, mm -hmm. uh, her counterpart, um, uh, in, in the Senate also did an exceptional job there, uh, as well as the staff of uh, Senator Brian Tanaguchi's office. So, you know, Pat and Carol and, and Tracy and Susan, just an exceptional job, you know, and I counted upon, you know, my immediate staff and then Dana and you know, BT and CJ and uh, the list goes on and on. The clerk's office and whole Sergeant Arms Kevin, um, who just did a tr terrific job putting this all together. I, know, I, I mean, I attended, so... I heard there was like 130 volunteers. We had about 130 um, uh, staff people come in and then their support. Yeah. Um, they uh, set aside their day duties here at the Capitol and mm -hmm. spent as much time uh, at, at, the, uh, at the meeting site at the Sheraton. And there are those who volunteer to come mm -hmm. forward on the weekends or after hours mm -hmm. to also staff us uh, for some of these sessions. So I really uh, appreciate all their hard work uh, because really at the end of the day, uh, you can't do something like this, pull it off well without having that kind of committed uh, uh, yeah. staff. Mm -hmm. And that's what we heard repeatedly, that they felt the Aloha spirit. Oh, yeah. And they felt the sincere efforts on the host committee mm -hmm. and uh, the folks involved yeah. to really engage them. Yeah. And so um, it's really a, a tribute to the staff, both yeah. House and Senate members. Yeah, they did an excellent job. They and really I, and did. I, and I can't for, you know, also not, not mention um, Senator Brian Tanaguchi, yeah. who took the lead in the Senate and got you know, people like Senator Brickwood Galateria, Senator Joe Takuda, Senator Michelle Kidani, mm -hmm. um, they all participated not, in the, not only in attending, but on the programmatic side of getting involved. And so they did a heck of a job getting mm -hmm. their staff uh, also on board and helping to get um, that, that private sector support also yeah. for something like this. Yeah, and, and talking about the private sector, I mean, you also had displays of our agriculture and our industries here. Yeah, you know, that's a brilliant uh, idea of uh, Representative Cliff Suji, who was also involved as a panelist along with Representative Yamane and Representative Kyle Yamashita. But his idea was to showcase the organic, locally grown produce mm -hmm. uh, products we have here in the islands. And what was really good about it is that at the Sheraton, they have a, a farm to plate uh, practice where I think 40% of their their um, produce is grown locally. Wow, uh, that's I think excellent. Yeah, I think it's the highest of all the hotels mm -hmm. down there. But anyway, uh, farm to plate, and so Rep. Suji wanted to highlight some of the ingredients, some of the produce that people are going to eat that night mm -hmm. at the Great Lawn, uh, at that ethnic uh, food f uh, fest oh, yes. that we had for our mm -hmm. guests. So they could actually see uh, where some of the produce came from, what island, what region, mm -hmm. Um, and then also enjoy it later on that evening. Yeah, I, I thought that was excellent. A good yeah. way to um, showcase what we have here too. And we had what, like 600 guests? You know, we had planned for 500. 500 mm -hmm. was, was the, uh, the goal to, uh, you know, uh, cover all expenses within, you know, with the sponsorship as well as the uh, registration fees and, and uh, other things. We had, I think, close to 680 uh, wow. uh, folks registered, including uh, you know, legislators, their guests, uh, some of the sponsors and staff. but. 680, and then Cheryl Duisero, who's the uh, assistant uh, at CSG West in San Francisco, told me that uh, we set the new record uh, wow. going back 10 years. This is the <laughs> largest uh, attendance they've had in 10 years of having these annual meetings. Oh. So, so Hawaii, and uh, we should be very proud of it, set yes. a real high bar mm -hmm. on attendance as well as um, uh, participation in, in our programs. In, in an economic downturn. In an economic downturn. I think people understood the value of traveling all of their states mm -hmm. and, and coming to Hawaii 
and learning that you can do business here. Yes. You can um, interact with your colleagues here. You can learn new strategies, techniques, new uh, ideas, and take that home. Uh, and yeah. we can talk about that maybe a oh, little yeah, bit Oh, yeah, we're going to talk about that. But yeah. I mean, just to focus on that, to, to make a new benchmark for CSG for attendance in a down economy in a place that you know, people don't really come to for conferences because right. they say it's too expensive. But wow, that's, that's exciting to see. You know, uh, Joe, you know, thanks to you and you know, my colleagues, both in the House and Senate, we were able to pull it off. And I think, I think we, we, can, we can set a new uh, benchmark at this point in time. Mm -hmm. Hawaii uh, should not be penalized for being a beautiful place. Oh, yeah. Hawaii's people should not be penalized for being culturally rich, mm -hmm. rich and diverse. And I think we've, we've showcased to the 13 Western states, at least, mm -hmm. and those from Guam and some of the Pacific Islands, that Hawaii is a place you could, to do business. That's right. You know, to mm -hmm. engage one another mm -hmm. and to reach uh, consensus and solutions to yeah. better, you know, uh, your respective states. Yeah. Yeah. And so like um, APEC, the Asian Pacific Economic Cooperation is going to come mm -hmm. in in November. Yeah. Uh, and and Hawaii is acting as a whole state for yes. the United States of America, mm -hmm. for this country. Uh, we in a smaller venue uh, you know, serve a similar purpose of showing that it can be done and we shouldn't hold our beautiful weather, beautiful people, beautiful culture mm -hmm. against us yeah. in, in convening a business meeting like we had with CSG West. Yeah. And talking about business meeting, I mean, they didn't come just for all the prettiness and uh, the good food. Yeah. I mean, you provided some real good material. You know, we we're very fortunate because of the East West Center being here. Mm. And 50 years of successfully uh, leading our country in its relationship with the East West Pacific region. So working with uh, Dr. Morrison uh, and his professors and his staff at the University of Hawaii uh, East West Center, we we're able to showcase the importance of the East West Center mm -hmm. and what it means for our country, uh, much less our state. So there were uh, several breakout sessions both at the East West Center campus, oh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. which we brought in people from the outside. Uh, also at the uh, Sheraton, we had some breakout sessions to talk about the East West Center and, and the importance of the relationship with, with China and India, yep. the importance of APEC, the importance of trade, the importance of uh, military security and, and presence in the mm -hmm. Pacific Asia region for trade and commerce. Yeah. So, those are things that the East West Center um, uh, has some expertise in. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it would please uh, the East West Center uh, advocates, including our congressional delegation, The CSG West was the first government um, organization on a um, bipartisan um, or bi you know, nonpartisan basis to endorse uh, and support continued funding wow. for the East West Center. That's awesome. Yeah, so we beat the National Governors Association, oh. um, the county or our groups, and I think the other regions, on coming up with a policy declaration in a resolution to support continued mm -hmm. funding, uh, recognizing the importance of the East West Center. Yeah. Now, the, the conference itself, I mean, you had a grand opening with um, George Cam. Yeah, you know, um, George Cam and Brother Nolan, you know, uh, two, two brothers that I just, I just love. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we wanted to do something different that was really going to set the tone. So going back several months, uh, I sat down um, uh, with Kiki Mookini, and uh, uh, she's a, uh, she helped write um, with uh, Mrs. Pokui, the uh, Hawaiian Dictionary. So I mm -hmm. went to my, my source of inspiration and getting a, a word or description of a meeting. And she's the one that suggested to me that in a meeting of this caliber with leaders from all over, maybe the word, a Hawaiian word, would be halavai. Mm. H-A-L-A-W-A, -A -A, halavai, uh, a gathering place, a place of meeting, a halavai hale, a uh, meeting house. But Kiki Mokini gave me the idea that it, that would be appropriate. So we started with Halavai, mm -hmm. a gathering of leaders. And, and building upon the Hawaiian theme, um, I sat down with, 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 with uh, George Cam, you know, Quicks Quicksilver, you know, Ambassador of Aloha. Um, and then we started thinking about, well, let's talk about where we are right now mm -hmm. as, as, a, as a community, as, as a state, as a, as a country. And we talked about um, the canoe uh, being a metaphor yeah. for mm -hmm. getting from point A to point B and how all have to work together, all have to pull together, all have to um, use their strengths and, and, and place them accordingly in the mm -hmm. vessel. But everyone stays in the canoe, yeah. we move forward together. And the whole idea of holomua, um, of moving forward together, you need to pull together, you need to yes. work together. Mm -hmm. And so we use that metaphor and that concept 
uh, into the opening address, which George Kemp did a superb job. Yeah, awesome. Uh, tiny in the concept of working together, the spirit of aloha, lokahi, mm -hmm. laulima, all the uh, values that we, we, we treasure in Hawaii. And we did it in a, um, in a, a true Hawaiian sense. You know, we started opening with the, the, the shell, the pu'u shell, mm -hmm. calling everyone to the meeting, um, and then with um, Kamaki uh, leading the Oli uh, chant, um, along with Mr. Um, uh, Al Harrington, uh, yeah. as assisting the calling, the beckoning of coming in. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did something that uh, I thought was appropriate that I have, haven't seen done many times. We uh, closed the doors. And we asked the sergeant at arms and our security people to temporarily close the door mm -hmm. while the ceremony goes on so that all eyes and ears can be present mm -hmm. uh, towards the stage as the pool shell um, was, was made, the sound came forward. So the focus would be all of us collectively as a group That's right. would focus in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and it served that purpose. It had yeah. a kind of that um, uh, uh, moment in time that you knew something was big coming, something yeah. new was coming, yeah. something dynamic was coming. And then from there we opened to a beautiful prayer um, by the Kahu, and then George Cam comes in, yeah. you know, and uh, with Brother Nolan accompanying him mm -hmm. uh, through uh, song and music. You know, tell about Hawaii, about the law of spirit, the mm -hmm. relevancy of Allah today, and what it means for the rest of the world. Yeah. And so it was a different type of PowerPoint um, yeah, without but, the PowerPoint. But, but, yeah. but the point was made very yeah. powerfully. Yes, that, it was. You know, um, Hawaii has, the, as a gift to the world, the mm -hmm. Lord Spirit, mm -hmm. uh, unmatched. And it's something that we need, we need to share. That's right. We need to yeah. share with our visitors, our guests. Mm -hmm. And they need to share that in turn in their own communities. Yeah. I thought it was a great sense of opening. And then it, it kind of gave everybody the sense of what we're going to be doing yeah. the next few days yeah. and the educational end of it. Yeah. And George set that great tone with that. Yeah, you know, um, and what's really amazing about it is that a week before, um, they enlisted the help of um, um, a halal, and um, they did a terrific job by actually bringing the metaphor of the, uh, the canoe paddling yeah. to the stage mm -hmm. in, in, in a dance of symbolic of canoe paddlers. Mm -hmm. And it was a male dance, you know, mm -hmm. so you got men dancing. Um, um, very strong, very powerful movements using canoe paddles. Mm -hmm. So Chiki Mahoy's uh, halal brought the metaphor of voyaging holomua hola to life. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, they're showing that you can work together, and it was very. I, I think uh, for many of the visitors uh, from oh, yeah. the mainland, they were just in awe. Yeah, they, I think they were. They were just in awe. I think yeah. um, they're. they're they're blown away, yeah. but they got the message. They did, they did. And then, yeah. then we moved into some of the sessions, right? Yeah. We was, had some other keynote speakers. Yeah, we also had, the, the following day, we had, it was a Sunday, uh, we had Admiral Patrick Walsh mm. uh, from the Pacific Fleet yeah. uh, here, at, here at Pearl Harbor. And he spoke to the importance of the uh, Pacific Fleet and the military presence in Hawaii yeah. uh, for our awesome. country. Yeah. Uh, in, in this day and age, mm -hmm. when you have um, China, you have Indonesia, uh, you have North Korea, uh, you have activities going down in the Philippines, and mm -hmm. how important it is uh, for the security of this area yep. and to have a forward presence in the Pacific uh, makes sense for all of our partners in the area. Yes, you know, you know. I thought he was very impressive. Yes, yeah, so and, and he also tied into the uh, the the humanitarian value mm -hmm. of having a forward yep. presence, uh, like like we have here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Uh, in reacting to the Sunday uh, tsunami, yeah, uh, one of the first to deploy um, out of the states was American uh, servicemen, yes, overseas from Guam, from Okinawa, from mm -hmm. Japan, uh, to help those you know affected by the earthquake and the tsunami. Yep. And I think it was there was some slides that he, sh he, he you know, yeah he, he showed he yeah showed. I think there wasn't a dry eye in the house. No, you know, I don't think there was. And they're seeing those soldiers there yeah. in the devastation, you know, helping the, you know, you know, our friends in Japan. And I thought that was really excellent because m many of those people from those <coughs> 14 states probably never realized that, how much of a presence yeah. our armed forces were right there on the ground early on. I don't, I don't think the national news really carried all that. No, I, I don't think they rea realized the importance of it. And, you know, each of the states, uh, either to the Guard or to the Reserves or to the, you know, you know respective branches, Navy, Marines, you know, Army, Air Force have members mm -hmm. of their own, you know, community. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Here in, in, in our islands, whether mm -hmm. you're at, at, at Kanohe Marine, in Hickam Air Force, or in Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. or up in Waiawa, in yep. Schofield, where, all, where we live, you know, you know, yeah. playing a very important role. Yeah. Um, but it was, it, was, it was great because that very afternoon, we had a little time out where they had an opportunity uh, to go and tour um, Pearl Harbor. Oh, yes. And mm -hmm. go into the new facility there, the museum. Yeah and uh, go out to the Arizona Memorial to pay, pay their mm -hmm. respects. Mm -hmm. And I thought the, uh, the, the sequence of events was just perfect. It, it was, yeah, that was perfect. And, and Joe, I guess Keakua was watching us because through the oh, entire yeah. um, period of time there, we had beautiful weather, oh, we did. morning, noon, and night. Yeah, yeah. we did. And for out, outdoor activities in Hawaii, yeah. you're always thinking, oh, it's going to rain or anything, but we're very fortunate. Yeah, I, that tied in really, really yeah, well. And the yeah. importance of what happened back in 1941 right. versus where we're at in the Pacific region right, right now yeah. with our armed services and yeah. uh, that was that was a great move into and then then you had other keynote speakers. Yeah, the third day we had uh, at our luncheon a keynote speaker was uh, Ca Candy Crowley, mm -hmm. you know, M uh, MSNBC um, uh, political um, reporter, and, and he she talked to uh, to us about what was going on in Washington today and the national national level and some of the challenges we're facing as a country and. The dynamics going on in, in, in the Beltway, uh, especially in our know, nation's capital. Mm -hmm. um, she spoke to um, some some of the polls tracking where we're going into this, um, uh, you know, election next year in 2012. Oh, yeah. Some of the uh, different candidates, and really uh, from a nonpartisan perspective, but as an observer of, of mm -hmm. American politics, I think she she explained to us that we're a very dynamic period of time. Um, um, a lot of this being influenced by uh, special media or the, the new social media that's yes. out there. Um, uh, so our leaders have to be held more accountable, more responsive because information moves so fast. But she also talked about the, the, the need to really um, maybe do some better analysis and some um, uh, studied analysis of the issues and mm -hmm. to maybe better inform the public that there are some choices that we need to make uh, and, and there, are, there are some changes that we need to uh, bring about uh, right, in order yeah. to you know maintain where we are our standard of living mm -hmm. and, and, and we'll put, you know our expectation for the future for yeah. ourselves and, and for, for our children yeah. so I think she brought it at, at a nice high level mm -hmm. and her being open to some of the questions that were, were given to uh, I really appreciated that. yeah uh, it was yeah. I was so impressed with we were talking about stuff happening right now right. I mean it wasn't like okay this happened last right. year or two or three years ago yeah. we were talking about right now present day it, stuff yeah and these 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 keynote speakers and, and the yeah. the trainings that we attended. Yeah, you know, Candy, you know, Candy was talking about the um, uh, the, the debt ceiling debate, mm -hmm. debt ceiling uh, resolution, yep. and and what Congress needs to do in the next uh, two months. Mm -hmm. That's that's going to have tremendous impact upon all uh, 13 Western states, CSG West, as well as the nation. Yep. And and you, you can even suggest maybe the world because what what Congress does to address the 1.2 trillion dollar yeah. uh, reduction mm -hmm. of expenditures and or revenues. Are going to have a tremendous impact upon upon the states. Oh yeah, and I think she spoke to that and, and letting us know that it's uncertain right now. No one can predict, but we're hopeful mm -hmm. that the uh, super committee of twelve, a oh, nonpartisan yeah. group, are going to come back in and make appropriate decisions. Yes, we might not all like them, yeah. but they have to make some decisions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as we learn, areas of Medicare, Social Security, and defense spending will will have to be cut. Yeah. But you know, default. Yeah, and we'll, that's going to affect us. That's going to you know. hugely affect us, big time. Big not, time. Yeah. not only were we talking about what is presently happening, but then you had a keynote speaker that also talked about yeah, you going know, into the future, right? I mean, closing out, closing it out. Um, we had uh, Joe Kotkin. Uh, he's a leading um, demographer, uh, futurist. Um, he came in and and, and, and talked about um, basically his theory in his latest book that you know the, the next. Um, Hundred million, mm. uh, going out 50 years to 2050, when we add about 100 million to our current 200 million population, so the U.S. population will be 400 million in 2050. What will mm -hmm. it look? What will it look like? What are the yeah. demographics going to look like? And he made a point. Number one, uh, demographics is destiny. So look at where we are today. Yeah. And unlike other um, um, futurists or demographers, he was he was very positive. Yeah. Uh, and and he, you know he wasn't bashful about saying that there are some. Um, um, you know, there are some challenges our way, and, and the West can lead. But at the same time, you mentioned that uh, demographically, our young, young population, uh, the ability for us to uh, have higher birth rates, 
uh, means that we, we can't stay ahead of maybe China and India and some of these other countries where they have low ba birth rates, you know, mm -hmm. uh, the Europeans. So th that's an opportunity for us. That He also um, was bullish about our ability to innovate mm -hmm. and being the intellectual center uh, of the world, that we can still innovate and, and, and research new drugs, new strategies, new, new techniques. Yeah. Um, and he, had, he held that as being great promise for us. Oh, yeah. Uh, the threat was, he said, basically it's, it's, it boils down to water and, and food. Yeah. You think that's the ne next big crisis for the world? It's going to be water and food. Do we have enough food? Do we have enough water uh, of, of, to feed, feed the world's population? And he also mentioned in America, he thought that the divide would not be between the races anymore, mm -hmm. uh, but at income levels. Yes. There was a growing disparity between uh, the richest rich and the poorest poor. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, shrinking middle class, yes. and he saw that that was, that was a threat across mm -hmm. all lines, uh, because he felt that uh, demographically we were becoming uh, a more cosmopolitan uh, type mm -hmm. of society, and uh, the, uh, the, the 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 population of of, of white uh, folks, pure white folks, is diminishing. They're becoming more blended, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with Hispanics and Asians, yeah. um, you know, and and. and he actually paid us a tribute in Hawaii. You know, we're becoming more like Hawaii is right now. Yeah, that's where the nation's going to be more yeah, like Hawaii yeah. right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, <coughs> so I thought that was really. I mean, you either did it consciously or unconsciously, but the opening, joining everybody to be focused, and then getting these different keynote speakers, and you just kept rising the bar with each keynote speaker to to look into the future, and then where we are as legislators or government officials. Wow, I guess we're going to run out of time real quick here. I guess it was um, a great opportunity to attend CSG, which I did. But um, I'd like to thank you. Well, you're very Dr. welcome. Uh, thank, thank you and uh, my colleagues <coughs> and all the um, supporters out there. We had a great meeting, and I think we set a high bar yeah. for Hawaii. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.